in a world where the next war might be decided in minutes, not months, interception has become as important as firepower. That's exactly why India's Project Kusha is quietly becoming one of the most consequential defence developments of the decade. It's not a surface-to-air missile system. It's not just another ballistic shield. This is India's attempt at building a homegrown S-500 class multi-layered missile defence architecture, one that can track, intercept and destroy threats travelling faster than sound even before they enter Indian airspace. While details are classified, what we know is this. Project Kusha is DRDO's next-gen long-range surface-to-air missile and anti-ballistic missile system designed to intercept everything from aircrafts and UAVs to cruise missiles, MRBMs and even hypersonic glide vehicles. It will reportedly feature two-tier interceptors capable of engaging threats both inside and outside the atmosphere potentially up to 400 kilometers in range and altitudes above 100 kilometers. That capability doesn't exist today in India's inventory. Yes, we have the S-400 which is formidable, but it's built around air dominance, not full-spectrum missile defense. The S-500 Promete from Russia, which even they've barely deployed, is built for threats like F-35s, ICBMs and space-borne assets. The US has THAAD and ground-based mid-course defense. China has its own SC-19 and HQ-19 interceptors under strategic missile command. Even Turkey recently tested Typhoon, its longest-range ballistic missile yet, and is co-developing missile defense layers with Europe. It's no longer optional. You either build shields or stay vulnerable. Which brings us to the threats. From Pakistan, India faces short and medium-range ballistic missiles like Shaheen-3, which can hit targets over 2,700 kilometers away, and Ababil, a MIRV-capable missile designed to overwhelm interceptors with multiple warheads. From China, the list is longer. DF-17s with hypersonic glide vehicles, DF-21D anti-ship missiles and a whole ecosystem of maneuverable re-entry vehicles or MARVs that make traditional interception near impossible. These systems don't just fly fast, they change direction mid-air, fly lower and confuse radar tracking. And if you're wondering whether India can shoot them down right now, the honest answer is not reliably. Project Kusha aims to change that equation. What sets it apart isn't just the range or altitude, it's sensor fusion and network integration. Think early warning from GSAT satellites, tracking from ground-based AESA radar networks and interception controlled by real-time AI-assisted targeting loops. This means Kusha wouldn't wait for missiles to enter Indian skies. It would track them in space, classify whether they are decoys, MIRVs or gliders and take the shot with enough reaction time to allow layered defence. Unlike the S-400, which is primarily built to defend fixed high-value areas like Delhi or Mumbai, Kusha will be mobile, modular and scalable. That means you can deploy it with forward troops near Ladakh or move it near sensitive naval assets in the Andaman Command. It's not a weapon, it's an ecosystem built for modern missile warfare. And there's a strategic reason for why DRDO has been pushing this. The future of deterrence isn't just about hitting back, it's about denying first strike success. If your enemy believes their missiles won't land, they are far less likely to launch them. That's exactly why China has hardened shelters for its ICBMs. That's why Israel's Iron Dome, Arrow 3 and David's Ling exist. And that's why Project Kusha matters. It signals that India is not just preparing to retaliate, it's preparing to survive. So no, this isn't some flashy import. It's not a vanity project. It's a direct response to a battlefield where threats are evolving faster than treaties. A response that says, if the next war is decided in five minutes, we'll be ready in four.